Today I'm going to be going over the good and the bad about Last Epoch to kind of give you a better idea and understanding of if you should get the game or if you have been considering getting the game, maybe uh, this will give you the reason to get the game or not to get the game. I've put about 120 hours into the game so far. It's not even fully released yet. We're still in the beta stages. I think the full release is around the 21st of February, so it's coming. And I just kind of wanted to give you my pros and cons and explain why I think this game is actually really quite good and worth picking up. Now, I do want to say before I get into the pros and cons, if you are considering buying this game and you want to support me as a content creator, you can visit the link in my description to get the game at my Nexus store. This will uh, help me slightly monetarily, so I appreciate it if you do get the game through Nexus. If not, you know, no big deal. Um, okay, so for the pros, I have quality of life as one of the biggest ones. So something that Last Epoch does very well as an ARPG that a lot of ARPGs tend to struggle with is quality of life. Since there are so, mo so many moving parts to ARPGs, it's hard to manage all the quality of life aspects of the game. But I will say that Last Epoch has uh, kind of nailed it when it comes to quality of life. So first off, the game has a bunch of sort buttons in every single stash and in inventory. There's search bars and stashes in every skill tree so that you can look for particular keywords when searching for something. That way you don't have to spend a lot of time reading everything, you know? The pickup radius when collecting crafting materials is quite nice. So if you click on one crafting material on the ground, it picks up all of the crafting materials within the area. It's quite nice. And, uh, you pick up gold just by walking over it. You don't even, you don't have to click the gold. You just run right over it and it picks it up for you. There's easy to use fast travel as well. There's waypoints all over the place. There seems to be a waypoint in just about every area in the game. And you can travel to waypoints without needing a waypoint. So you don't have to actually be at a waypoint to travel somewhere else. Meaning you are almost never wasting time with uh, running somewhere that you have already been before. And then also there is a quest tracker and map icons dictating quest direction. So you never feel lost or confused at, during the campaign or storyline. There seems to always be a place to go or like a, a question mark icon telling you how to go or where to go on the, on the map. So you never feel like you're getting lost during the story, which is something that a lot of ARPGs have struggled with uh, keeping their story from feeling linear, even though I think that ARPGs should have a linear storyline. It's part of the reason why people play them, uh, which is the last thing I on my quality of life checklist here is the game has a linear campaign, meaning it's easy to get through the campaign without getting lost or confused or ba double backing or wasting time uh, kind of going backwards. So you can blast through the campaign, say if it's if you've done it before and it's your second time blasting through the campaign or third time or fourth time, you can get through the campaign pretty easily and get to that end game where most ARPG players enjoy the game the most. My second pro is loot drop rates are quite good. The loot drop rates in this game are a lot better than other games I've noticed. And particularly the cool thing about this game is everything drops identified. So you don't have to waste your time identifying everything, giving you a reason to read uh, rares and magic items that drop on the ground. You can also drop rares that are worth picking up. And there are things like exalted items in this game, which have drop only mods. So it makes it even more enticing to read your rares and to pick up uh, rare items rather than just picking up like unique and legendary items off the ground. So the loot drop is kind of solved in that situation where it makes it feel like it's worth picking up rares, it's worth reading rares, it's worth crafting on rares, and uh, it doesn't feel like a chore to do so or a waste of time. My third pro is there are hardcore and softcore options for the game. So you can choose to mm, make a character who has to uh, go deathless, otherwise they delete your character. And then obviously there are softcore options for the people who don't want that kind of uh, gameplay, that kind of hardcore style. There's also a character found option, which allows you to make it so that there is no way to trade between characters. There's no way to uh, trade any kind of currency or items between players. And therefore you're kind of at the seat of your pants 
so to speak. You kind of have to fly by the by the whim of whatever the game gives you, which is quite nice. I really like the solo cell found gameplay style to be integrated in ARPGs to give people a, a more of a challenge and more fulfillment of progression. My fourth pro is it's an easy to learn and powerful crafting system in this game. The crafting system is what I would call, consider the best crafting system I've ever seen in an ARPG. They really have it solved, I think. It's all very deterministic crafting. Not, not a lot of it feels like heavy RNG. It feels comfortable. It feels doable. It feels like anyone can pick it up and learn how to craft in this game. So the crafting is very easy to learn. It's powerful and deterministic. So it doesn't feel like you're ever getting really like cheated out uh, when crafting. So very amazing crafting system in the game. Uh, my fifth pro is there are excellent end game progression and a large amount of end game content to keep the game interesting. So there's a lot of little things you can do at the end game. You have your monoliths that you can run and then you have echoes within monoliths and then you can do uh, corruption in monoliths to make the monoliths harder, more difficult, drop you more loot. So there's always like an infinite challenge to the end game. You can scale the end game infinitely through corruption. And then you also have four different types of dungeons in the game right now. The Lightless Arbor, the Temporal Sanctum, the Arena, and the Soulfire Bastion. And all of these offer an interesting way to play the game and an interesting uh, reward style at the if for completing them. So it feels like there's plenty to do at the end game after beating the campaign. So you don't have to worry about like getting bored of the end game very quickly. Uh, something that Diablo 4 has struggled with is having really terrible end game progression. So uh, one up for last epoch for making a great end game progression, or at least an end game loop that feels comfortable and fun to play. Uh, my sixth pro is there is deep min maxing opportunities and character progression. There's a lot of very small, intricate things you can do with unique items in this game, and you can even do it with rare and exalted items. So it feels like you can really like min max your gear to an extent and there is like an endless chase i guess for that better item for that better upgrade it never feels like you reach a maximum and you can't push further or like upgrade further it always feels like you can keep working towards something in the game uh my seventh pro is that skills in this game have skill trees so unlike diablo 4 where you have a skill with like three different points on that skill that you can upgrade. It's very minimal uh, skill progression. In this game, each skill in the game has its own skill tree and the skills on that skill tree will dynamically change the skill to make it function in a different way or to make it work in a different way. So there is a lot of skill diversity and skill development going on with every skill in the game. And that leads me to my eighth pro, which is build diversity. There's a lot of classes and a lot of skills in the game, as well as uh, each class has three ascendancies. So there are different branching ways to go between every class. It does feel like there is a lot of build diversity and build opportunity going on in the in the game. And therefore, it feels like once you get bored of a build or you min max a build to the point where you're bored of it or done with it, you can always move on to the next build or the next option. Uh, all the classes feel comfortable. Uh, melee feels good in this game. Everything about uh, the classes, they all feel quite balanced and, and powerful. Nothing feels like it's getting shoved out or uh, unplayable, I guess. So very good build diversity. My ninth pro is that this game offers an offline mode. So for people with poor internet, there is an offline mode, meaning uh, you can play an ARPG without having to worry about there being any uh, lag issues or getting frustrated with lag or DCs or any of that, you can play offline mode if you have trouble with your internet. Uh, it's a very good option for you. Now, the only downside about the offline mode is it's very easy to cheat in the offline mode because it is a client side database for your characters. Since the only way to do offline mode in an ARPG is to make the, the loot you get client side, it means that you can edit your game files and give yourself whatever you want in offline mode. Uh, it, technically, it's against the terms of service. It's against the rules, so I do not suggest doing it. But it is something that unfortunately is possible to do because they have offered offline mode. Uh, my 10th pro is the game is made by an independent developer. There is 
no executive uh, money grubbing fiend out there controlling this development team. The development team is built out of a lot of ARPG fans such as ourselves and for that reason the game is being developed with passion before uh profit so it feels like there's a lot of passion and effort going into the game which is good for the future and track record of the game in my opinion uh, my 11th pro is there are unique and intricate boss fights the boss fights in this game are telegraphed first of all so you can tell what's about to happen before you get hit by the bosses the bosses feel uh fair you can definitely do a boss without ever getting hit by any of their abilities. And for that reason, also, the bosses are extremely punishing and challenging. If you do take damage, uh, most likely one hit's going to kill you or a couple hits going to kill you. So it's cool to have these really intricate boss fights and have legible and telegraphed boss fights. But also keep in mind that that is going to amplify the challenge of these fights. And uh, my 12th and final pro is there is promise of future development. So... Even though one point, version 1.0 is coming out on the 21st of February, that does not mean that they are stopping all development. They have promised, you know, future updates, leagues, cycles, they call them. And uh, that means that we're going to keep getting content added to the game as time goes on, which means the game's only going to get better as time goes on. Now, I do have a few cons about the game. Now, I know that was a large list of pros, but I do have a few cons about the game. But typically, or uh, most of these cons are not anything that I think is like something that can't be fixed down the road or something that can't be addressed at some point. So one of the cons is there is low polish to the game. So the game does not have a large amount of polish. This is because their development team is quite small. Uh, they don't have the budget to focus heavily on art and polish and all these special effects and animations. And so the polish is kind of low in the game. Uh, if that is a big deal for you, go play Diablo 4. Diablo 4 has got plenty of polish. That's what Blizzard's good at. Um, but if you're looking for gameplay and something more about the gameplay and the mechanic focus rather than the graphic and visual focus, then Last Epoch's your kind of game. Uh, a second con I have is there's a lot of bugs in the game still. None of them are really game-breaking, but there are a few weird bugs here and there that you'll notice, like certain enemies T-posing and being weird in the game, or just general, like, strange occurrences, or your character will, like, blink around for a second. There are a few weird bugs, but nothing that it can't be solved down the road. Uh, my third con is there has been some server instability. I think this is just mainly because of the development phase of the game. Uh, I'm sure server st stability will come as time goes on and they start getting more money for their game and they can afford better servers. So I would say the server instability, first of all, is not that bad. Um, I maybe crash once a day if that typically it's it's not that bad. It's not something where it's like, so frustrating you can't play and they the servers have been getting better over time so uh we can expect the servers to eventually become fully stable at some point my fourth con is repetitive sound effects so there's not a huge database or bank of sound effects going on in the game so some of them get a little repetitive or annoying um obviously you can just turn off the sound effects if you want but yeah there's not a huge depth of music and sound effects going on in the game yet um Again, this is something that can be worked on in the future, but don't expect this to be a musical marvel, I guess. And then my fifth and final con is the end game progression can be somewhat confusing without somebody telling you how to do it. The quest progression, although holds your hand through the whole process and gives you some decent tutorials on what to do uh, as you level up your character and progress through the game, the end game is a little confusing and doesn't exactly tell you how to progress the end game quite well uh, past doing uh, the main base obelisks of the game. So it is something you do have to kind of figure out for yourself or look up some information on, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit of uh, unleaded information, I guess. And that kind of wraps up the pros and cons of the game and my review of the game. Uh, overall, I think the game is fantastic. For $35, you literally can't go wrong. This game is definitely worth a full AAA title price. But for the low price of $35, I really do think that this game is worth picking up and playing um again i've got 120 hours in the game so far i plan on putting hundreds of more hours into the game i am just reaching the surface of the game i am just getting started and i am already having a blast with it so thanks for watching and hopefully uh 
this entice you to play Last Epoch, and I'll see you in the game. And I will uh, catch you in the next one. All right, see you later.